And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Skullosaurus, which was a request from Dino Bow via our Discord and Patreon, as well as Dinosaur4602. So thank you. Skullosaurus was an ankylosaurid that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Alberta, Canada, in the Dinosaur Park Formation or Oldman Formation, the exact locality is uncertain. It was an herbivore estimated to be about 20 feet or 6 meters long, and it had a lot of osteoderms and a clubbed tail. Like all good ankylosaurids. <laughs> yes. The osteoderms were mostly conical or subconical and mammillary in shape, which means nipple-shaped. Huh. The texture of the osteoderms were rough and pointy. It was discovered in 1914 by fossil collector William Edmund Cutler in fine-grained sandstone and claystone sediments, and then it was named in 1928 by Franz Nopschka. The holotype included a nearly complete skeleton. It's missing the end of the tail, the right forelimb, the right hindlimb, and the skull. But it also included osteoderms and skin impressions. The holotype is in the collections of the Natural History Museum in London now. I think we saw that when we were at the museum, didn't we? Kind of in the back corner of the dinosaur hall. It's flattened out, displayed vertically. That sounds familiar. I think so. There's so many dinosaurs there. There are, yeah. But that's one of the good holotypes that's in the mix. So the type species is Scolosaurus cutleri, and the genus name means pointed stake lizard. And the species name is in honor of Cutler, who was injured when the fossils fell on him while he was excavating. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, only injured, that's good. It could have gone worse. It could have. Yeah, dinosaur fossils are heavy. Yes. In 1971, Walter Coombs anonymized Scolosaurus along with Anodontosaurus lami and Dilophosaurus acute squamius with Euoplocephalus tutus, but it didn't really explain why. He wrote it was based on, quote, the numerous ankylosaurid skulls known from the Oldman Formation, now Dinosaur Park Formation, and member E, the Edmonton Formation, now Horseshoe Canyon Formation, end quote. So just, there's too many ankylosaurids here. We're going to lump them all together. Yes. <laughs> Basically, he said there's only one genera of ankylosaurid that lived in that time and place, and Euoplocephalus was named first, even though that holotype was fragmentary. So at first, this synonymization was accepted, and Scolosaurus cutleri became Euoplocephalus cutleri. Then in 2013, Paul Pankalski and William Blows re-described Scolosaurus and found it to be a valid taxon. Pankalski and Blows found that Scolosaurus had different cervical or neck armor, and the structure of the forelimb was different from Euoplocephalus. They also found differences in the pelvis and armor between Scolosaurus and Diloplosaurus. Because the holotype of Scolosaurus was so complete, many reconstructions for Euoplocephalus were based on the Scolosaurus specimen, especially the armor patterns, which are based on the osteoderms that were found in situ on the Scolosaurus holotype. So Victoria Arbor and Phil Curry found that Scolosaurus was unique because of a number of features. So first, the squamosal horns on the back of the head were proportionately larger, backswept, and had distinct peaks. Second, the skull armor had a unique pattern. And then third was about the osteoderms. So on the tail, there were conical osteoderms. There were also large circular osteoderms with low central prominences. That means they didn't stick out much. And then on the neck, on the half rings of the neck, there were compressed half moon shaped lateral on the side osteoderms. And then fourth, also on the tail, the knob at the end of the tail looked circular when you're viewing it from above. The club? Mm-hmm. So based on the humerus and other bones, Scolosaurus was as large or larger than Euoplocephalus and other ankylosaurs from the same region and time. But not ankylosaurs, because it wasn't around at the same time. Yes. The claws on the feet of Scolosaurus were hoof-shaped, compared to Dioplosaurus, which was triangular. There's also a lot of referred Scolosaurus specimens, which include the skull, vertebrae, ribs, femora, tibiae, fibulae, and more. Arbor and Curry assigned another specimen, USNM7943, to Scolosaurus, and it was a partial cervical ring, neck ring, found in 1874 in the Frenchman Formation in Alberta. That's now housed at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. The Smithsonian also has specimen USNM11892, which was found in 1928 in the Two Medicine Formation, and that's a partial skull. And a lot of Scolosaurus specimens were found in the Two Medicine Formation in Montana. There was another specimen, MOR433, that was formerly known as OO Cotogia, 
and that was reassigned to Scolosaurus in 2013 by Arbor and Curry. Pankowski had named O.O. Kotokia earlier in 2013, and not everyone agrees with this reassigning. And the reason is not everyone agrees that the specimens coming from the Oldman and Dinosaur Park formations are the same as the ones coming from Two Medicine Formation. However, the Oldman Formation, when Scolosaurus lived, was pretty dry compared to the Dinosaur Park Formation because the Western Interior Seaway had regressed so far. And the Upper Two Medicine Formation also had a dry environment compared to Judith River Formation and Dinosaur Park Formation, which are nearby. So we would need skull material to confirm if they are synonymous or not, otherwise they do seem similar. Other dinosaurs that lived around the same time and place as Scolosaurus included the Hadrosaurs, like Gryposaurus and Myasaurus, other Ankylosaurs like Edmontonia, Oviraptorosaurs, Ornithopods, Ceratopsians, and Dromaeosaurs like Bambiraptor and Sauronthelestes, and Tyrannosaurids, Displetosaurus and Gorgosaurus. There were also a lot of fish, such as sharks, rays, sturgeons, gars, and amphibians, reptiles, lizards, crocodilians, pterosaurs, birds, and some mammals. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left.